okay, you guys. I've been promising dynamic duos. We gave you Brit Cherry along with Paul Cromerian first, but this particular duo I have been dying to do for a couple of years, and I think we've talked about it over and over again. But I want to welcome Lacey and Benji Schwimmer. Hi, guys. Hey, what's up? I'm howdy, so howdy. excited to get you two together. I wish we were all in studio in one place. I know. It, we're never literally in one place, so yeah. And yeah. that's just based upon Lacey's personalities. It's it's impossible. Yeah, yeah. Um, Benji, I know you brought masks and things. If you don't want to answer as yourself. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm prepared to answer everything as either Lady Gaga. There might be some other celebrity guest appearances. I'm really well connected, Kristen, in case you didn't know. I love so, this. I, we're getting yeah. cameos and everything. Um, you know, first big question, how have you guys been handling this quarantine shutdown? How, how are you feeling? What are you up to? It's a lot. Benji is a bigger germaphobe than I am with this. So he's been a little crazy, but same. Yeah. Yeah, I, I get uh, daily updates from the CDC and the World Health Organization, and I have since 2007. Um, and I'm the guy that wears a mask in long play. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I spray everything when I get into a plane anyways. And so this is just triggering me, <laughs> my anxiety. But I've gotten much better with it. Like, going to the store, it's kind of a regular thing. It's not so it's such a big deal. Lacey works with, like, a lot of kids, and they're literally, like, germ factories. So she's immune at this point to anything. I love you kids, but you're germ factories. <laughs> you're so it's true. Germy. <laughs> no, I, we were talking about that, Lacey and I. I mean, I've, I've been traveling with a medical mask for about two years now and wiping down the seat with Corox wipes, wiping down my hotel room as well. Oh. Dirty. We're gross as human beings. And I just sit there and think, well, now hopefully things are a little bit more sanitized. Well, I think too, as like dancers, you know, we go into a studio that Lord knows when the floors were actually cleaned. We touch bars that other people are touching. I mean, dancers don't think about human sweat and germs and all of that. So for like Benji and I growing up, we were both very big germy phoby people, him a little bit more so than me. Um, but just it's always affected us. Like we're really gross. Like if someone in in the store coughs or sneezes, like both he and I are like, and we totally give a side eye. Go home. Yeah. Just, it, <laughs> out. That's amazing. Uh, the other big thing that's sort of come out of this is everyone's had to rethink your business model. If you want to keep on earning money, a lot of people have, have you know turned to virtual dance classes and teaching online and doing privates. Um, have you guys retooled a little bit of your business model just to keep some money flowing? Oh God. Yeah. I mean, I'm literally in the process of renovating my space that I'm in now, um, into a, a studio. So yeah, I mean, I've actually been teaching more international <laughs> classes than anything because it's now virtually free to have me there with them. So I actually kind of like this transition. I think if we can do a happy medium of, you know, what once was teaching and what is now would be really awesome. I think it's a happy medium, personally. Yeah, it's, it's interesting that you say that, Kristen, because I think everyone has to adapt. Like the entire world is adapting, whether it's uh, the dance world or any other kind of field or profession. Uh, for me, it's the same. Like um, one thing that I've always done because I I work often with like couple by couple situations where they can't bring me out necessarily for like a master class all the time just because the funds aren't really there for like an individual unit of people. Um, so I do a lot of online coaching as it is anyways. Like usually Wednesdays, and Tuesdays and Wednesdays were usually like my designated days to teach private lessons. And so the one thing I've been doing, same thing with Lacey, we've been doing a lot of master classes kind of everywhere. Um, but I, yeah, to, to reshape the model, I agree with Lacey 100%, and that's very rare, is that we do need to find like this happy medium. Because the, the hardest part too is there are some teachers that are good orators. There are, there are teachers that can actually communicate and educate properly. And then there are those that only can move and do what they do and they don't even understand their genius. They don't understand their talents just yet. So I hope that this time is like a chance for some of those people that maybe haven't developed the proper skills on how to educate. Like this is a good chance for them to really work on that and kind of take a step back from just the hustle and the cycle and then kind of move on from that and learn from those that do have the ability to orate such as Lacey or myself or other dancers that really know how to speak to people. And, um, but if anything, like, it, yeah, it's just weird not being interactive, like physically with people and moving them. But uh, who wants to be physical with people right now in this moment? So it's the best option. 
Benji always makes fun of me because like I'm the worst practicer in the world. Like you'll never meet a more lazy practicer than myself. You're honest. <laughs> so I'm very proud of how lazy I am. But her nickname is Soft Mark. Like like I call her Soft Mark. So <laughs> Soft Mark through. <laughs> My life is a soft mark. So, um, no, but like for me, being able, I know this sounds really bad, but being able to sit and teach people is really awesome. <laughs> like, I really enjoy not having to get up all the time and educate. But I do agree with what Benji is saying is some teachers cannot sit down and verbally educate. You have to physically be there, show them how to do it without describing step-by-step step of what you're supposed to do. So yeah, I think it's a great way for all the teachers to kind of get their butts kicked too and realize maybe I need to rethink my strategies as a teacher too. I also think it's been interesting too, as our quarantine has gone on and on and on, you know, that first couple of weeks, everyone was like free classes everywhere. And now people are starting to do by donation or charging for their services sometimes discounted because, you know, everyone's in different financial situations right now, but I do appreciate that too, because yes, it's good to do a free class here and there, but it's also good to charge for your work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've been doing both. So when, when this all started, you know, with the lockdown, I did a bunch of free classes on my Instagram, which then kind of butterflied into to other avenues on Instagram with other, um, like Capizio, for example, and, um, other places. So then, you know, I started getting requests for international master classes through zoom and then private lessons through zoom. And it, it all started kind of funneling. So I try to still offer free classes just because I understand that not everybody is in a place to pay for zoom classes or private lessons. Um, but at the same time, we all have to kind of re-strategize like what we've been talking about and uh, hustle a little bit more too and re-figure this out. But yeah, I'm, I'm discounting everything and just making it easier for everyone all across the board. Good. Yeah, I, I think it's better for the economy, the dance economy in particular to, you don't want to undersell yourself to a point that uh, are we now saying that dancers are just recreation people, right? So like, I, I feel like there's so much value to the, to monetizing our skills and our hard work and dedication. Like Lacey, she got this really awesome boost from Capizio. I've been working really hard and I got like a boost from Nike, as you can see here. She was so, Lacey. so I got a Nike. Um, so, you know, I mean, that, that's so <laughs> he was looking at you thinking that that was real. You were such a jerk. She was looking at her face. Trust. She didn't see what? the entire thing. Cause she was like, no, I was looking at this. I was like, oh wait, it's in reverse. And I was um, upset that it's mirrored. But, but not Nike. So, um, anyways, you drew it in reverse. No, it's just the camera. What? think about that so let it marinate but yeah I, I I think for Lacey like she she did a lot of work um really promoting in the Instagram live series and you know to me one of the things that I've helped uh that's helped me at least during this time is to kind of rethink just um understanding understanding what kind of skills I can use passively right when I'm not able to go to a dance convention when I'm not able to like be live with people in the physical um it's been wonderful trying to see what other avenues that our talents and our skill sets have that can still help people. Now, I believe like giving back and, and doing things is a great thing. I suggest anybody that's watching this interview, if you're debating on, do I do something for free or not? Um, I've been approached by a lot of studios. Lacey, I don't know if this has happened to you, but like they'll say, okay, um, we want you to do a Zoom class. We have 60 people. Um, they're all ready to go. They're really excited to take from you. And then we want to book you for next year to come back to our studio at a different time. And I'm like, great. I'm like, so so how much are you charging per, per kid, you know, per student? Because obviously, like, you're charging your dance studio right now for their, these classes on Zoom. And they'll be like, oh, no, no, the, the, the deal is if you teach this free class, we'll, we'll bring you back sometime next year. And I'm like... It happened to me. Oh, it's, it's happened to me, like, four or five times from different wow. studios. Yeah, and I thought that was a little... And, I, like, my first thought was... First, I'm, a, like, I'm, like, defensive about it, right? But then my thought is, wow, people must be... The students must be going through hurting like a really you know terrible problem but i would wish that the studios would just say hey we're going through a really bad time we've been open for 25 years 40 years we need like a name to kind of boost some confidence in our dancers like if that were the case i would have done it at the drop of a heartbeat but it felt a little sneaky like a little snake in the grass emoji kind of thing and it was really sad to see that and i told them like look i would love to work for you guys at a different time 
but right now, like the really the, the free classes that I'm offering are either based on my social media or at my dance studio. Right. And, and that's kind of what I'm doing. I, I give a discount everywhere else. And if I make good money at something, I recently did this thing where we collectively did like just a lecture series um, in the partner dance communities. And um, we did like an all nations kind of thing. So even if I generated more people to watch it, we made it like a balanced effort. And then we donated all half the proceeds to struggling members of the dance community for whatever reason. So it, it, it's, it's a give and take situation, but I think people need to be vigilant and remember their worth during this time. Yeah. I, 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 like I said, I think it's, it's a happy medium. It's finding a balance of what you feel like donating uh, to help the cause um, of, you know, dancers in need for whatever uh, reason that is. But, you know, recently too, aside from like trying to teach free classes and donate my time and all this stuff, it's, uh, my boyfriend and I have been writing songs and releasing them on iTunes and I will choreograph to them and do a free live class with that song. And then all the proceeds of that song goes to the COVID-19 relief fund. So we're doing our part. Like we're offering what we can as entertainers, you know, there's very little that we can do to help the situation. Right. We're just trying to figure out any other way that we can help people um, that are in the front lines because those are the people that need it the most. You know, it's getting medical masks and whatever, whatever they might need. So, Love. Okay. yeah, ben. any kind of mask is is helpful. Yeah, or those causes. kind of masks. You never know if JC can help. He's got a lot of money. <laughs> he does. And I, I would love to see some of that Jay-Z money soon. Uh, it, uh, just, to, just to piggyback off Lacey really quick, um, it, in general, like, like the fact that Lacey is collaborating with her boyfriend, like another amazing artist, Frankie Marino, like the fact that they're able to do something like that and donate back, I feel like that's the way you do it, is like you find some iconoclastic way to merge with other people. Um, like uh, uh, I just got invited recently to do something for the Elton John Foundation because Gay Pride is not gonna be able to take place this right. year. So we're doing like an anthemic mix of dancing all in quarantine and editing it. And it's going to be really fun. But like you got to do what you can to either to boost morale or to raise the funds if you have them. Um, and just again, I think it's important to know your worth because have you ever thought about this? And I was doing a study. I'm such a nerd with like historian stuff. So is Lacey. Um, what are you saying? I'm a nerd. I'm definitely not a nerd. I am not a nerd. Uh, so like I, I love dance history in general. And what's funny is the biggest booms that we've had ever in like commercial dance history and in dance being a profession was after uh, the Great Depression. So World War II and the Great Depression, after that you saw dance becoming like a real big thing. The nightclubs are really big, the swing dance scene, the jazz scene started taking really big shape. And then after that, uh, there was a Great Depression in dance again until uh, Vietnam War was over. And then after that, the disco era was literally born from that. They took the shabby like garb of all these 1960s hippies and then they went to this refined look late night at the club to change things up and the disco boom happened and then mixing happened and after the crash of 2008 conventions got bigger um tv shows dance tv boomed and it's funny that we go through these depressive states but the world needs to have these outlets which is why everybody that's struggling right now remember that this is a temporary situation and to like see things with a farther like lens into the future. Like Lacey, I'm not gonna name any of the other things that she's been talking about, but some of her plans that she's been like, she's been able to be for the first time in a long time for like an extended period of time. And the stuff that she has planned for her career and her brand are like amazing. Like they're so amazing. But I think it's because we've had the time to like actually take, um, take the time and appreciate the value of just being home in one place and like taking the sabbatical from the normal hustle and just like, killing it for the future and she's doing what a do great you have job to that. do you have any news to share then Lacey? <laughs> uh, sorry Lacey. Uh, yeah um uh, uh no Can you tease anything <laughs> yes i have a partnership coming through Ooh. with britney spears <laughs> no 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 okay uh, I, all the Britney, I feel left out. I, feel, I need a Brit thing. I don't have anything. You're readily available. That's what I actually want to know. Like, why? No, I, I'm really staring at this, but like, check this out. This is my ADD, but I have an actual vintage Paso Doble jacket. Oh my God, I love that. I wear like with jeans. It's so cute. You should wear it for the interview. To the gym. <laughs> to the gym, yeah. I don't know. Um, no, but, uh, yeah, I have like a potential partnership branding situation happening with a very, 
limited company. Um, I have my own method of um, teaching and all that stuff kind of coming out as well that I'm building curriculum and syllabus for at the moment, um, just to kind of build an army of qualified, educated instructors and um, people that are able to teach, whether it's through this platform or in person, just kind of trying to build a better community of educators out there. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all I can say right now. Okay, that's good though. Uh, good, good things to look forward to it for sure. Um, since you guys are both experienced from TV dance shows. Um, we've been kind of in this weird limbo. So you think they just kind of, right now they've accepted video auditions, but who knows if they'll run this summer. And then right after that, Dancing with the Stars should be starting up. Honestly, I don't think it's gonna happen until 2021, uh, just because dance is a contact sport. Um, any thoughts from you guys on how they can move forward? I mean, I, I, I'm in contact with a lot of people from Dancing with the Stars still. I just did a live with Emma and, um, you know, they are all still under the assumption that it is going to happen. They just will not have studio audience uh, in the actual theater itself, which is potential. I have seen other uh, locations of Dancing with the Stars do that as well. Um, Australia just com completed their version of that with no studio audience, um, and it still was successful and it ran. So, I mean, I think there is a possibility to make that happen. I personally wouldn't feel safe doing it. Um, just the risk is, is a little too high at the moment, but who knows, you know, by the end of summer, if it will change at all. I mean, we don't know. We, I know it's, it's like, it's honestly, it, we can speculate about everything, but it's one of those things that's yeah. really hard to, to know. Yeah. And, or how do you reformulate it? So like, for example, dancing with the stars, it, it's never been titled ballroom dancing with the stars. It's just been dancing with the stars. Mm -hmm. And in the kind of way it's like, well, then are they doing like solo routines? Like, do you have a pro that teaches them at a safe distance and remotely gives them like solo dance choreography? And if so, your casting would have to be different. People that are able bodied on their own might, you know, I, I just think it makes, it sets them up for much more embarrassment because they're on their own. You know, these pros really kind of save the day more often than what TV reveals. And so um, it is, it's a different format. To be honest with you, I, I think um, these TV shows, uh, people can say, oh, it's just a TV show, right? But I feel like like Dancing with the Stars and So You Think You Can Dance, those two in particular, and even World of Dance to include that, like I feel like those shows are just so paramount in like the next generations that are kind of obsessing over dance the same way that we did over like 1980s dance movies. And um, it's just really interesting to see that dichotomy as it's threatened what happens. And I feel like we, we again, people are dying. And it's one of those things where you can focus on like that extreme, but we all need escape. We all need right. happiness and positivity and recreation and sport. I feel bad, honestly, more than these rich ass celebrities. I'm, I'm more concerned for those little, like the minis, the dancers that have been maybe taking dance for a year or two, those are the ones that make it, I think it's a little bit more difficult. Like I've heard the attendance in general in like Zoom classes for dance studios, it's the minis that are, are stopping it because they just don't have the attention span to look at a TV and follow a dance class as much as the kids that have been conditioned for four or five years at taking class. And so I'm just concerned about this next generation. And if we don't have TV shows such as World of Dance, so you think Dancing with the Stars, or something else, we, we need that to kind of influence this crop, um, especially if, if movie sets are gonna be closed for 18 months. So like, if anything, this live TV scenario, and I'm gonna say this, if the NBA can do it, then why can't these shows do it? Because the NBA, Vegas is creating an entire like street system so that the families can live together in a secluded, private, gated community, and they can still play basketball games. No one comes in, no one comes out. Like. Dancing with the Stars, there's less personnel. So you think you dance a lot less human being and a lot less interaction. So and they're already, they're we already living together anyway, and so you think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and your, your pros on Dancing with the Star, they're practically like attached at the hip for the entire duration of the show. Mm -hmm. Not to so mention it, they're all married to each other at this point. So it's like... <laughs> I, do all married couples, just all the married pros are, are your pros that season? I don't know. Right. No, you know, what's funny is um, to piggyback on like, you know, the whole Zoom craze. I do think that there are both pros and cons to this Zoom situation. I think it's a really great way for people who might not have access to you normally to have maybe a special class here and there or a private lesson from you. But I fear that people are going to see how easy it is to have contact with all these dancers and they're going to start 
backing away from their actual studio who has educated them from day one. So I, I worry that, you know, these studios that are building these incredible dancers are going to start seeing these kids fall off because they're like, oh, I'm just going to learn it online. And it, yes, you can learn it to a certain extent online, but there is a limit of, of how much we can really get out of you without physically having our hands on you. You know what I mean? There's some technique that really needs to be taught in person. 100%. And there's an energy, a human connection and, and how to pull things out of people. So I personally do love the Zoom. I don't love it for general education. I think that it should be kind of a special masterclass vibe. You know, maybe you can't afford the person to fly to put them up to do the whole thing. This might be a really great alternative. And honestly, you know, like I like being home. I like having my dog and being able to cook and do all these things. So not traveling every single day weekend would be awesome in the future. But again, it's the happy medium. And it's, I think we all just need to continue to sp support the studios that are building these dancers for us as educators and not take credit by, you know, way of zoom or whatever it is for these kids. So, you know, support to the studios. We love the studios. Yeah. And a lot of the studios right now are suffering too. I, I have a friend who owns a dance studio and she's, it's a struggle bus right now because California has AB5, which was the, the freelance law that is not allowing, you know, you have to hire everyone as an employee, which adds 30 more percent of payroll. And then on top of it, you had the pandemic and she's trying to get a small business loan and the money's not there because big corporations took it. So we yeah. do have to support our small local studios. Yeah, well, our dad has a studio and Benji helps run it. And I mean, you guys are figuring things out over there. I'm not involved. I don't know. You tell them. <laughs> Uh, I, I just in general, like the business of it all, like I, I, I as a, as a family member, I just kind of help out with my dad's business. Um, and it is, it's, it's unique. The, 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 just the, the curveballs that you kind of have to throw at the government and then the curveballs that they throw back at you right now. And, and it's true. It's, it's really sad that like Outback Steakhouse, which has enough money to stay afloat for four years without even paying a single or, or selling a single steak, um, they're getting money and, and just random places are getting money. Starbucks got money. Like it, it just blows my mind that we're not preserving the arts. And it's it's this it's the same old struggle, honestly, because in schools and in budgetary situations with our government in general and a lot of governments, you know, the arts tend to be the first thing that goes because people see it not as a real lifestyle or a real job or a real profession or real education. And it's quite the opposite. Some of the most successful people in the world in general even if they're in real estate or something, they've taken dance. Like my real estate agent, in fact, since Lacey has been like restoring and like uh, renovating like a dance room in her, in her house, right? Um, yeah, she, okay, good. <laughs> the funny thing, she's not wearing pants right now. That's funny, that's what you don't know with the camera. So she's actually wearing a cha-cha skirt. She wears a heel and skirt throughout the day. And then yeah. wears- I have shorts yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. I'm wearing a dance belt, so you know it is what it is right now. Oh snap! She wait, wait, wait. I can't wait. prove much. Yeah. And, yeah. and wait, pasty white thighs too. <laughs> I love it. Your quarantine skin is blissful right now. Um, blinding. Totally blinding. No, but like the whole situation with PPP, which is what it is, like the pay, uh, the paycheck protection, uh, protection policies that we have. Yeah, it's. It's, it's insane that people are still having to struggle this and still having to prove their income. And I'm gonna say this in general, ballroom dance studios are not having a problem because ballroom dance studios in general are usually all about the bottom dollar. And they run those things like a, a Wall Street business, it's tight. But with regards to like the, the mom and pa studios, the jazz dance studios, the solo studios, the uh, social dance studios, not the partner dance, but the social dance studios, they tend to be those, that, like they, dance first and then everything else kind of comes second so my heart does go out to those studios that are struggling and those are the kinds of people that i think need to be honest because if you ask a dancer a teacher can you please help us in any way shape or form people would do it you know what i mean i would rather like it would be awesome christian with your network and all these dancers like if there's a series of struggling studios that wanted to collectively get together, I would organize 10 dancers to give master classes for a day or two days, just to, you know what I mean? Just to give back. If that's the, if that's something that can kind of keep them happy, but you make it exclusive for their studio and their people through their own Zoom portals, that would be amazing. Um, something that I, I wanted to throw out there because it's kind of a shameless plug, but it just, it's something that popped up with me. And I feel like this is something that we're not doing during this time that we should be doing our taxes. No, uh, in truth, one thing that I feel like is really important in general is this. Um, we've had so many 
uh, legendary and legacy building experiences in the field of like live performance, whether it's competitive, whether it's uh, demonstrations, whether it's whatever. And although we can't relive, we can't have those experiences right now. Like something that I'm doing this week actually is having like an evening with Benji Schwimmer. And it's basically a, um, a Zoom based invite interview sequence. And it's kind of docu style where I'm actually playing some of my like um, most notable routines in my competitive world championship career. And I'm talking about the good and the bad and the ugly and what happens behind the scenes. And what I think is great is it reinvigorates the videos that we can watch right now. Like how cool would it be to talk about like your favorite Dancing with the Stars performance or your favorite figure skating piece or your favorite Broadway show number or whatever it might be um, or like a faculty number and just talking about the funny things that happened behind the scenes what it actually takes to make that happen and just to kind of reinvigorate and reinstill some inspiration and like desire for this younger generation to push because what happens is right now is the only new content we're getting is either this which is amazing because it keeps us talking it keeps us engaged right or it's videos that are so grossly edited and and final cut pro to the 10th power that you're we're now saying, oh, it's more important that the digital side is taking precedence. But these live performances, everybody's had a live performance that kind of solidified their place in the dance world. Right. I think Lacey's had many of those in different TV shows, in different live performances and competitions. And, and I feel like it would be great. So I'm going back and kind of talking about what I messed up on, what was going on in my head at the time, what were the hardships, what I wish I would have known beforehand to hopefully inspire this next generation of dancers to stay hungry. Because competition, whether it's in TV, whether it's just winning an audition at a convention, or whether it's uh, trying to book a gig, like if you don't have that edge about you, we are kind of going to that space again where dance is just a recreation, not a profession, not a lifestyle. And I feel like that's just uber important. Yeah, I'm gonna piggyback on that though, because once this is changed and we're in the new version of how we're supposed to live our lives, because it's not gonna go back to normal. There is no new normal. This is our mm -hmm. normal right now. So whatever happens from here on out, you know, I'm excited for the surge in people wanting dance and music and art and movies and theater again, because people need that to feel happy. They, they want to go out. They want to go dancing. They want to hear a live band play. They want to, you know, whatever it is. So I am excited for the entertainers who are suffering right now, who don't have work right now. I mean, me, my boyfriend, Benji, anybody who's an artist right now is not really working what we're used to working. So I am excited for that surge, but I'm a little nervous because all of what we do as dancers or musicians is having people come and watch us or take lessons with us. So it is going to be really interesting to see how this evolves, but you know, at the same time, I'm really excited for that kind of surge in talent. And I think those ones that have been hustling and continuing their education and rebuilding what they are, are going to prevail. And the ones who are kind of like, Oh, what am I going to do with my life right now? I'm going to eat a bag of Doritos on my couch. Like that's, they're not going to benefit from this. So I think just kind of being proactive and, you know, continuing your work as if it's normal, you know? So I don't know. I'm excited for it in a really weird way. I'm, I'm excited to see new artists emerge and new talent emerge and, yeah, I'm ready to get back out there, too. I don't know about you, Ben, but I'm I am. ready. I'm going back to work on Thursday, you guys. Love it. Really good. Congrats. Yeah, which is crazy. Uh, but I'm doing, I do a segment for France, one of their entertainment <laughs> shows, usually once a week. And of course, we've been down, but France is back up and running. So it's just going to be me and a camera person. That's it. No <laughs> one else on set. Like, I have to do my hair and makeup and all that good stuff, but... I was like, we're starting to see like little small productions, things are happening, so. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it's awesome to do that. And just to remember too, like, as things are opening up, we're noticing that, you know, the, as the curve is flattening generally around the world, which is wonderful. And that's such a gift and I hope it continues. But if there's a resurgence, um, I think as dancers, I think we've learned, a lot of people have learned a really important lesson that when you do make your money to be smart with it, um, any, any little bit counts, like be smart, like, the, the hardest part, I think, and this is something that I hope kind of changes, I, something that Lacey was saying, like, you know, there isn't, like, an, this is not normal, and the future is, like, unwritten, and things are going to change, and I think that's a, a good thing in general, but, like, a lot of dancers really push a lifestyle, and I understand the need to do that. I understand the need to show what kind of car you drive or what kind of brands of clothes you wear. Like, we all fall victim to that at times, 
and it's not a bad thing to like reward yourself with good things. I feel like that's also, it's, it's a token of like how hard you work and like how much you hustle. However, like uh, I feel like as dancers in general, we're notorious for being that tortured artist that lives in the now and then we're not gonna have anything when we're 45, 50, 60, 70, 90. And so it's really important to like think about saving and being smart and let your talent really be what shines the most or you're just gonna be a Kardashian. Like, we, you know, dancers, we're such talented people, we don't need to fall victim to that side of the reality of it all. And um, it, it, you can still live your life, you can still take amazing selfies and like wear cool stuff. I'm not saying you shouldn't, I'm not shaming people that do that. However, I feel like it's important to be smart because if something else happens, like what happens with COVID-20? COVID-21, you know, there could be something there. <laughs> like, just be careful with that and like, and knock on wood, right? But like plan ahead and be prepared. And I feel like the dance community though, I think we've all learned an amazing lesson and we're learning to adapt because dancing will not die. One of my big themes is always, it's show business. We're always so good at the show, but not great at the <laughs> business. This is the time to get great at the business and align yourself in case something else does happen. And as we know, it prob we probably will have another wave of quarantine, unfortunately. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm ready for it. I don't even think I'm gonna go out until we're over the next quarantine. To be same. Honest. Yeah, same I, I, I think we're, we're, we've kind of like resigned ourselves. We're like, we're good. I, I'm a good cook. Like my husband does dishes really well. Like we'll get our groceries. We're good. You know, we've got two cats to entertain us and some Netflix. It's all good. You know, like I said, I'm not, I'm not worried about getting it. Um, I mean, I low key, I already told you beforehand, I, I kind of think I might have had it <laughs> earlier this year. Um, but regardless, I'm staying safe because if I do want to ever, I mean, my dad lives in California. I live in Vegas. I would love to see my dad at some point. So for me, I need to stay careful because I don't want to infect people who are really susceptible to it. Mm -hmm. People are not thinking of others. They're just thinking selfishly about themselves. Like, oh, I'm not working. I need to make money. I need to get back out there. But it's, you do have to think of other people in this situation. We are all on one planet. Like we all have to coexist. So Let's just all follow the rules and be respectful and call it a day, you know? Wear your mask, people. It's not that hard. Wash Boy, your damn hands. Some of the people did not have a mask on. And it is so, in oh my God, it's so mad. Infuriating, I know. It's not that hard. I'm, I even go out for my walk with my mask and people are not wearing it. I'm like, just wear it. Masks. So Yeah, it's, it's not difficult to wear masks, <laughs> you guys. <laughs> Buy my new album. Listen, we all wear masks, metaphorically. Metaphorically speaking. <laughs> Gaga. You guys, it's been such a treat to have you here. You are my one of my favorite dynamic duos in the dance industry. I love you guys so much. I can't wait to see you guys in person. I don't see you guys enough, honestly. Yeah, um, yeah looking forward to it. You're amazing, Kristen. Thanks for having us.